Hello, everyone. Welcome to Expressionist Discovery. My name is Rashab. I'm joined here today with Matteo. Matteo, say hi. Hello. Hello. How you I doing, know. Rashab? I'm good. We got the uh, original Oxines duo back here for those of us who are previous listeners of our music podcast. But Matteo, yeah. if you're listening to this episode, that means you're not listening to Oxfiends. What is this? This is our brand new podcast. Oh my God. Podcast, basically, we're going to be covering art each week. We'll cover a different piece and we'll kind of give our first impressions and we'll switch off who picks a piece and we'll talk about how we feel. We'll, we'll do research behind it as well and kind of give overall thoughts. That's kind of the basic gist of this podcast. But to, to get a little more into it, I and Rashab were both not like critical, fine art critical, you know, analysis. We're not super in the art world. Right? Like yeah. comparative to our previous podcast with Oxfiends, obviously our whole life we've been listening to music. Exactly. I haven't been looking at paintings my entire life. So this is very much the layman's kind of podcast with art. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like it, it's formatted just like Oxfiends, but our idea was, and Mateo, feel free to, you know, correct me on this or or add anything but our approach with this or our idea behind the conception of it was you know both of us are interested in visual arts you know i i've been to museums with mateo at least and we 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 share sort of a similar approach to looking at art in some ways and what we wanted to do was basically delve fully into this world without any necessary for necessarily formal training or anything yeah. just really pursue this as a passion but at the same time we want to have this podcast act as a learning space not just for you guys who are listening but also for us so you know yeah. as we're going through each piece and, and, and discovering new things and that's why we wanted to have that word discovery in the title was to indicate that this podcast is meant to be really an educational learning space but also you know, a place to a place to learn about this thing and learn how to talk about these these pieces and also just yeah. engage with some of these things, right? Like, Matteo, we both have an interest in this, but let's be honest, we haven't been able to really dive deep into this in a way. And definitely, so this podcast definitely. gives us that ability, right? Yeah, absolutely. It absolutely does. Like, so I, I'd say, honestly, for both of us, let's be real, our main focuses in kind of the art world have been film and maybe music. And so yep. with, with this kind of podcast, we really get to dive in just from a pure like hobby standpoint and passion into the, the entire world of art. It's not just paintings, too. It's yep. uh, it, it mixed media, sculptures, anything kind of like that. Art. We yep. really just get to dive in and learn while you guys also learn with us. Exactly. And, and, and our goal is to uh, stray away a little bit from, you know, the traditional arts that we've talked about previously mm -hmm. you know separately or together so you know music we have a separate thing going for that uh, and then narrative features documentaries all those things i think we've both of us have had um, experience talking about at length so we want to look at things that are a little bit different and I, i'm yeah. sure as you listen up with us um, on the podcast you'll get a sense of the types of pieces we're talking about including today's piece which we'll get into shortly so the idea is to just um come on this journey with us right like be able to learn with us and and realize that maybe we're not professionals in this but we're learning alongside all of you yeah. um so if you are someone who is like a very uh veteran art critic who's magically stumbled upon this podcast okay. um, you're not gonna get that in-depth uh stuff but our our goal is to try and be as in-depth as we possibly can and to increase yeah. our level right like as we go along yeah definitely I mean, I can say this. I just feel like everyone starts somewhere, right? Exactly. And, this, and, and we're, we're just broadcasting our start of our art journey of discovering yeah. and learning about it. I think it's just as simple as that. You know? Yeah. And our rule is like, whatever we pick, like even today's piece or whatever piece it is, we want it to be something that you can easily find over the internet and you can, you know, look alongside us and, um, you know, just just things that are accessible because like, Obviously, if films and music, you know, that's like, all right, it's on a streaming service, right? And then everyone thinks that art's not accessible, but there's so many pieces that you can look at just on the internet. And so I think we're going to always be picking stuff that, like, both of us are on a budget. We're not going to galleries every day. So it's it's stuff that yeah. you can Google. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, nothing behind, like, some weird type of paywall. 
whether yeah. physical or online. Just, just honestly, just something we could just share easily between each other as well. And just exactly you guys can find just online. And yeah. our goal will be to like just share those links with you guys in the show notes or, or the description of wherever this ends up being. And um, yeah, just to look along with us. And uh, I think just like auctions, Mateo, you know, I, I think it helps to kind of look at it before you, you know, dive in with us on the podcast. But obviously, since it's not like a full album, it's it's something you can look alongside too. But uh, yeah, just take a second and really get your own opinions on every piece that we talk about before really listening in. That's, that's my suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. Write down in the comments or whatever, wherever this ends up getting posted, let us know how you feel before we talk about our first impressions. You know, how, how do you think, well, how do you feel about the piece? Do you like it? Do you not? And then maybe there's some historical info that, you know, we end up not covering. That may be cool. Also let us know about that. Yeah, please do. Because we're always, again, learning experience. If there's something that we actually miss, you know, we'd love to mention it on the next episode or, you know, use it to color our our discussions for future episodes. I think they get the gist, Mateo. You want to get right into the first piece? Yeah. Uh, I'll introduce it then. Um, So our first piece for our first episode is Flowers by Andy Warhol. It was made in 1964. Um, Rashab, you want to jump in with your first impressions? Yeah, actually, before we even get into first impressions, let's kind of like take a step back, Mateo, and, and okay. discuss a little bit of the history and some of our okay. understanding of at least at the time period in which this is, which is this was done. So, actually, I'll pose you this question, Mateo: What do you, what did you know, or did you not know about Warhol and or maybe the '60s in America, since this is an American piece? Before looking at this at this particular piece, what did you before- know of these things? Looking at this, like, I'm going to be honest, I don't think I'd even seen this piece before. Uh, I mean, I know about the 60s and America could be being very hippie piece, flowers and whatnot, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, with Warhol, I know super famous for doing pop art and stuff like that. I, I think his most well-known art piece would probably be like uh, Marilyn Monroe, maybe one, or yeah. Campbell Soups or something. But I, I had honestly only really known the basics of his work, the pop art and whatnot. But exactly. Otherwise, exactly. I didn't know too, too much historical and, or anything else. What about you? What and you I think that was, that was like our intention, right, with this piece. Because mm-hmm. on the first episode, similar to Ox Fiends, but kind of not similar because we were not so entrenched in this world. We wanted to pick something we were both at least somewhat familiar with. And I knew that we were both going to be somewhat familiar with Andy Warhol and particularly, you know, Warhol and specifically because he's like all over, like everywhere, right? Like he's yeah. one of the most well-known modern artists. Mateo, I don't know if you remember when we took our trip to San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, there was a whole gallery on Warhol, right? Like he's like a mainstay in most museums and galleries. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think I remember that. Exactly. So... Um, you absolutely were right on the pop art thing that, that, that was his major style. And, um, you know, to save us a little bit of time, what I'm going to do is just, uh, read a little bit from this website. It's like a British website kind of defines pop art. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. So basically it was a movement that emerged in the fifties and flourished in the sixties, which is actually, this was painted in 1964. In America and Britain, drawing inspiration from sources in popular and commercial culture, and then different cultures and countries contributed to this movement during the 60s and the 70s. And Mateo, you were absolutely right, I think, about 60s being like the hippie movement, flower power, all of that was happening then. Um, So you're absolutely right on that. But what's interesting, I don't know if you noticed this, Mateo, I think you were kind of getting at this about Warhol, usually doing like, like Marilyn Monroe, right? Easily recognizable Hollywood star. Everyone, the Campbell soup, like, you know, those kinds of things are such immediate American icon. It says pop culture, right? Yeah. So Flowers is actually a very weird detour for him, if you think about it. It's very much a detour. I absolutely agree. Especially when I'm looking into it more. It's way different than his older stuff. Exactly. And I was reading this essay I found online by Michael Lobel, which is called In Transition, Warhol's Flowers. And we'll be sure to link that because it's a very in-depth view 
um, of this piece in particular. So some of the history behind it is apparently that this was supposedly at the suggestion of someone else. There was this these photos in a magazine that Warhol based this off of. Mm-hmm. And um, they were like these photos of flowers uh, that he used to base this off of. And you think about what Warhol is known for, you know, objects, American icons, like these are things that are mentioned in that essay. And this being sort of a very different thing, right? Like he's looking at nature now suddenly. Mr. Commercial, aka Andy Warhol, is now interested in nature. So it's very different, right? Yeah. So it's very interesting that he completely changed his route um, and, and went for this very strange topic that's typically different for him. And in just doing like basic research, I found that you know, there's been many different uh, possible reasons or causes for for painting this. And one of them is, and I, I don't think this is a necessarily a cause. I think it just became contextualized this way, which is that it was featured in galleries that were dedicated to John F. Kennedy's memory after he was assassinated. Yeah. Did you come across that in your research? Yeah, I, I did come across that information. And, and if I'm being honest, Rashad, I, I at least feel like, it was. It's kind of a stretch to put that on Andy Warhol. If that's what that's what it was. Inspiration was. Yes. I do understand though where you're coming from. If you're saying you kind of contextualize afterwards, where it's like exactly the, the flowers are the symbols of mourning. But I, I definitely don't think this was made in tribute to uh, JFK. I, mean, I what, don't what are think your so. I don't think so either. Like I'm agreeing with you because. Based on the research that I did, it seems like um, it was like an afterthought for Warhol a little bit. And it kind of um, was mixed in with the galleries, I think, that were dedicated to his memory or somehow the meaning of it became associated with that. But as far as I could tell, it was really Warhol just kind of looking at this photograph of flowers and saying, hey, I want to do something entirely different from what I've done before. Definitely. Uh, Also, as you've mentioned... It's as he had seen photographs of flowers. Is it, I think that's a kind of a really interesting thing about him. Is he didn't just go out, you know, outside to a garden and look at some flowers. It was in a specific magazine, a photography yeah. magazine, that he actually yeah. looked, and that's where he found his inspiration for. Uh, yeah. Because it was a photo of some hibiscus flowers and stuff. I think that's kind of interesting. Instead of going, because you would think of it, it's a nature piece, right? You you paint some flowers from yeah. grass. Or yeah. You think, you know, I, I'm going to go get some inspiration by, you know, touching some grass outside, smelling some flowers. But it said it's just from a magazine, which I thought was really interesting. And I, and maybe it's a simple concept, but I never really thought about that. Just like going and finding an already completed art piece. <laughs> so that's what it was, right? It was a yeah. photograph of some flowers yeah. and then taking your own turn on it. So I thought that was really interesting. Well, it's funny, too, because it kind of speaks to Warhol as an artist. It's like he's so engraved in, like, the pop art movement that even for his one, like, nature piece, he's still not outside. He's still yeah. looking at it from the lens of, like, a like a magazine, right? So it's, yeah. it's kind of funny, almost, funny. that Warhol, like, even in his transition, he's still very, <laughs> like, pop arty. Yeah. He's, he, like, manages to leave his lane while also... Still keeping one toe in his usual pop art lane. Exactly. Copying an already done piece. And it's like getting almost into the piece now, like this is not this is not like a perfect biological anatomical reconstruction of the flower. You know, like this is not like I can see the stem, I can see the petals. It is still very much feels contemporary, right? It's not like a realistic key uh version of of flowers it's it's yeah no, I mean, it's, pop art. it's 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 basic you know there's yeah. i even had written that down there's very minimal detail on specifically like the flowers that was pretty interesting yeah. and I, I know it's a it's a cliche to say like warhol was ahead of its time but like even in a piece that's not his classic piece i mean is there any way you can come to the conclusion that he wasn't ahead of his time like I mean, just look at this and, and let's just start even comparing to the type of art we see today, like on the internet, even like the hyper stylized style. Mateo, I know you're familiar with this and you're getting yeah. what I'm talking about, right? 
Yeah, like, absolutely. it feels like something that is a precursor to, like, internet art. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting that you say that, because it's definitely hyper-stylized. I think that's, that's the main difference of how it kind of connects to art nowadays compared to back then. Because when I think of art, you know, 60-whatever years ago, I'm like, okay, all the art kind of looks the same or whatever. I, maybe I'm completely wrong saying that, but, but it, it, was, it was more uniformity together. But now I feel like there's, everyone kind of has their own style now, and especially with Warhol, you can definitely see his own specific style with this, you know. Yeah, and it's just interesting how like his style permeates through popular culture today, even or the art world today. Like, you know, you talk about like the use of neon colors and, and the way that yeah. even the grass is done. It, it's it feels like something that would come off from the internet in 2022. You yeah. know, like some artist just working. It, it seems like digital art almost is what I'm. Yeah, getting. like honestly, this piece flowers just really does seem ahead of its time. Yes, yeah. this, this it seems like something I could see in a you know museum of modern art like it came out in the last you know five years or something yeah exactly and i think that's it speaks to like just i mean you you think about the popularity of warhol like i mean i have no statistics to back me up on this but it feels like his popularity is really reaching a height in our generation in, yeah. in these times because I think there's something about his art, you know, especially you talk about the Marilyn Monroe piece or the Campbell Soup piece, like mm -hmm. his reconstruction of honestly capitalistic icons, yeah, right, is something that is, I think, will resonate with people today where we're like inundated with brands, right? Yeah. So that style, even when it's applied to something like flowers, still has that modern sense to it. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's, I think we've already, you know, started getting into the piece and our first impressions with Mateo, and I hand it over to you. You opened the piece. We, we're using, uh, I think this is the New York MoMA website to look at the specific one. And and yeah. I think we should clarify th that this was a series at one point, but we're looking at one specific piece that will be, you know, linking down below for you to see. Yeah. I, I guess for anyone that doesn't have access really quick, maybe we should... Uh explain this piece like it, it, this is the one that has on the top left it's orange flower okay. top right pink bottom left red i don't know kind of like a violet red violet, yeah something something like that and then bottom right yellow so that is this specific version of flowers that was actually something i got confused on i wasn't sure if it was from a series or if it was, this was like the first piece or you know what i'm not sure if you could film me on that for sure but, but yeah, I think it was part of a larger series, mm -hmm. um, but as far as I can tell, this is the piece that's, I, I believe, what most popular. And the medium on which this one is, was done is something called offset lithography. And here's when, like, you know, when we said we're going to be learning stuff on this podcast, that's yeah. new. Like, apparently this is a, and I'm reading off a website here. A method of mass production printing in which the images on metal plates are transferred or offset to rubber blankets or rollers and then to print media. And the print media, which is usually paper, doesn't come into direct contact with the metal plates. So this is just the description off the internet. Yeah. So that it's, tells it's like, you a little um, bit of how it's done. Like silk screens, right? Like you ever seen yeah. those people making like t-shirts that they just have like, okay, now we're only going to use one type of paint. That's what, that's what I assumed it was. When, I think you're right. Made, right. Yeah. And I think Warhol has done silk screens as well. So it doesn't surprise me that that's his method for, for this painting as well. It's, it's yeah. not traditional, you know, it's not brush on canvas, I believe. So yeah, yeah. it, it is, it has this sort of like silk screen uh, quality to it. So Mateo, I think we've described the piece. We've given a little bit of context to it. Let's start talking about this from an artistic vantage. What were your first impressions? You opened it on the website. Hopefully your brightness was up because <laughs> you need that for this. Uh, what were your first impressions? I'll keep it short and sweet. My first impressions, I liked it. It instantly just felt like a vinyl like album cover. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Those are my exact first impressions. What were your first impressions? Those were my exact Yeah, like I have to agree with you. Like it's the it's the same thing where I was saying like I think Warhol, no matter what piece it is, it's just going to connect to our generation 
in a way that's very visceral just because we've seen stuff like this, you know, in today's day and age with digital art, especially digital art that's like kind of harkening back to like vintage stuff in the 60s, right? Which is pretty popular right now, you know, overall in, in the art scene is like, or even just like on the internet, people are always trying to emulate that 60s style and it's it's kind of come back stylistically. So yeah, first impression, similar to you, it's like, first thing you notice is just like the neon, right? Like it's almost like, it's, it's so bright, it's like hurting your eyes, <laughs> which is pretty typical for Warhol. Yeah. And it's vibrant, like it, it, you know, it's flowers in the most true and showy sense. It's like, okay, these flowers aren't subtle, they're big, expressive, colorful. Like it's, when you think flowers, you're going to think something like this. Yeah. And I think it's honestly really interesting how Warhol conveyed these flowers with while also using such amount of like minimalism in the yeah. detail of the flower. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, it, there's literally only details and, and shadows on like, I don't know what it's scientifically called, but on the curves on the inside of the flower. Exactly. Otherwise, you, you don't see any outlines of petals other than the direct edges. Exactly. Well, and, and that's also in contrast. Not only does the color really pop, to me, the actual image of the flowers pops because of the huge contrast between the detail, all the scratchy details of the grass. Exactly. It, it exactly. really, in a way, it's the flowers are minimal, but they pop as if they, if they had super amount of detail because of the contrast between the images of grass behind it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree with what you're saying, because like if you just have it open right now and you look at the yeah, like you mentioned, you can see the edges like you can figure out the shape is of a flower. Right. But yeah. it is very, very minimal detail. There's nothing scientific about this. This is not your scientific diagram of flowers at all. Like this yeah. is very like, shall I say, not abstract, but kind of like a expressionist, <laughs> like to get to the name of the podcast depiction of flowers which oh. is it's it's more of a feeling than a really a scientific depiction like it, it feels like a child's version of flowers if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah I, I think it's a kind of colorful. interesting way to put it is the way warhol kind of depicts flowers in a way because you know right usually people think if you just see flowers but it's it's more than that you know you can it's by taking away all the detail, you use your other senses of when thinking of flowers. I don't know if I'm conveying that the way I mean it, but it's like oh, you are, yeah. you know, the smell of the flowers is what's important. The sound of the flowers moving with the wind, you know? Yeah. yeah. The well, Some people eat flowers, the taste. But I think it's really interesting to actually put the usual most important factor of a flower, the way they look, kind of in the back seat, And to put all the... Uh, you keep your... You, it kind of inundates you to have all your other senses to think of the flowers. Your brain fills in the details. That's the way I feel with this piece. You know, oh, that's not... absolutely right. Like it, it feels drained of all anatomy, essentially. Okay. Like it's, it's just like, and we can start talking about like even the painting style, right? Like it's smooth. It's like blended, especially if you look at that, um, my right hand corner, at least it's the orange one um, on the bottom right hand corner. It's so like it's like kind of a misshapen flower Mateo, if you have it up right now but um it's like blended together like it has almost like a butterfly shape are you seeing that yeah yeah i, I do see that yeah you're talking about the bottom right kind of yellowish one yeah that's right yeah yeah so it, it, it is it, it's interesting basically it, it's definitely the form you know compared to the other one yeah, it, it's formed in a different way. It's just blended. Like, the way it's blended, it has probably the least, um, how should I put it, like, the edges are not as shaped. It's not as clearly defined it yeah. as that's kind of smudging together. And that's the case for most of them, right? Like, it's it's kind of like um, a smooth look is what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it's very much smooth. And I think that's also just by pointing out one specific, the flowers. I think if you kind of look at all of them, all kind of different, and they all kind of have their own little style, right? Like the yeah. one on the top right, the pink one, that one you has a very sharp edge on one of the petals. Mm -hmm. So the bottom right is a little more deformed, everything kind of blended together. Bottom left kind of just seems like it's a, almost like the personification of flower. It's bulging out, it's big, it's 
round everything. While the one in the top left, the orange one, is kind of more... It's there, but it's kind of cut off. Mm. Like, it, it, it seems like it could keep going. So it just seems like a little more rounded, but yet also sturdy. Yeah, that's right. I think you brought up a really good point about, like, the differences amongst all four. Actually, that's something I just realized is, like, yeah, they're all kind of unique in their own way. Like, yeah. none, none of them are, like, exactly the same. And that actually brings me a little bit into the spacing of it, too, right? Like, this is a uh, square canvas, which is making everything feel very cramped, plus the flower size and the spacing of it makes the flowers feel incredibly close to each other. So the whole thing has like this, like, I want to say inviting feeling when you open it. Like a comfort feeling. It seems like it's almost like a, a bed of flowers. Yeah, you know? exactly. Nice and soft. I'd, I'd like these as pillows, you know, the flowers. Yeah, that's they a good They seem point. comfy. They seem comfy, you know? Yeah, that's a really good way of putting it. It has like a, like a fluffy look to it. it it's, it's fluffy. It's nice. There's nothing... Too, too sharp. It, it, it's interesting, though, that we both kind of feel that way, because my first impression of the grass, though, it, like, not, it's if there weren't, weren't any flowers on this piece, yeah. I feel the opposite. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. It, it's, it's distortion, it's all scratchy, it just looks like Warhol, like, scratched his nails on, yeah. like, the paint, and just to mix it all around, it just yeah. looks it's way different in the foreground to the background, you know? Exactly. I, fact, I, I think I really like that contrast. I agree with you. And in fact, if you, Mateo, like if you try to mentally remove the flowers from the painting and just try to imagine what that grass would look like by itself, be honest, would you be able to tell that it's grass? No. no. Honestly, no. If I try to remove it, to me, it, it like reminds me of like outer space or it just seems otherworldly. Yeah. You know? It, it has a distorted look, like, and, and it kind of gets yeah. grass right in a way. Like, grass is kind of. Let's talk about the structure of grass here. Get really yeah. into biology and ecology, like, you know, it had, like the scratchiness of grass. Like, I feel Scratching like it exemplifies grass. that. And then you have these like beautifully, like, like uh, you know how we were saying, smooth, warm, inviting flowers mm -hmm. all closely tucked in next to each other on this square canvas. I just love that it's a square canvas. Yeah. Like, I feel like if it were, like, a rectangular canvas, and, um, I mean, I'm not very familiar with, like, what the dimensions of that would be, uh, but I can tell you the dimensions of this one. So, apparently the composition is 55.8 by 55.7 centimeters, and then the sheet is 58 times 58.6 centimeters. So, I, honestly, those numbers mean little to me, but just visually okay. looking at it, yeah, I think we're coming to the same conclusion. Yeah, I, I know. I think I think maybe what you're trying to get at too is I feel like the squareness of this piece honestly helps. Yeah, the piece overall. Like if, yeah. if it was a circle, I don't think I would like it as much as I do because I think that'd be too much of the uniformity. I think this piece really shines with this contrast, right? Because there's a yeah. the contrast of the round, fluffy flowers, but then there's also the scratchiness. Of the grass, so I think mm -hmm. if it was also round again, it would it, it would just blend in too much. Instead, it just seems more. It seems like there's three parts to this piece: the square, then the flowers, and the grass. I don't yeah. know if you feel a different way, but that's I, how feel I feel that way right too. And I think a lot of other like critics that I was looking through while researching have pointed out the square canvas because I, you said circle. I don't know how I would feel about if if the frame was like a circle, but I know how I would feel. If it was like a wider rectangle and imagine it's like still the same four flowers, but then you have like more background grass, like mm -hmm. it just like if you, if you expand this image too much, it would lose that warm feeling, I think. Like right now, yeah. it, 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 it it's contained. It's colder. Yeah, yeah it's it contained. I think you explained it really well. It feels almost like it's a little overcrowded. Yeah. Actually, weirdly enough, gives me more comfort from this yeah. piece. Yeah. It doesn't feel constraining. Just, yeah. It That's feels okay. like comfy, like you know. There's a difference mm -hmm. between like I don't, I don't feel claustrophobic looking at it. Like I, I yeah. do feel like that comfort feeling, and I think that comes from the square canvas and and the the way the flowers are shaped and painted yeah. and the contrast that you mentioned and all those. I, honestly, that, I did, I think it's the contrast. I think that's why it all works being so yeah. close together. Yeah, like, I think so too. The contrast just 
added so much more of a difference between, like I said, those three parts, the framing, the square framing, the flowers, and the grass. To me, that, that's what I think the, this piece, honestly, one word, contrast. That's how I feel about it. And I that's like a, it. Yeah, that's a smart way of putting it. And, I, and it is one of those pieces that's, you know, almost like a very accessible in the sense that you will have, like, I'm sure most people will have that sensation or that feeling when they see the piece for the first time because of its simplicity, that contrast, the, the painting style, it, it immediately verbalizes itself to you. Yeah. Uh, let's just go back and talk a little bit more about, like, from an aesthetic point of view, because that word is thrown ar around a lot these days. Yeah. Um, Sometimes, honestly, in very interesting and creative ways. So I think knowing what we know about art today, the internet today, you know, and we, we discussed a little bit about this, but what do you think about the aesthetics of this? And what does it remind you of? Um, any, is there anything specific it reminds you of? Because I had a few ideas, but I want to hear from you first, Mateo. Oh, how specific I can get. But it definitely reminds me of some specific aesthetics it kind of makes me feel like that kind of, I don't know, I think it's, it's called like Pui or something like that, like early 2010s, kind of, you know, hippie, flowy. Like that, that's the most modern way I can kind of put it. it. It just feels like, okay, there's a girl wearing overalls, got a ukulele or something. It just feels very free flow and kind of hippie-ish. What are your thoughts about aesthetic? Yeah, like it's, it's interesting because like if you, let's say I gave you this piece and I didn't tell you what year it was from, like how long would it really take you to guess? Because to be honest, my, here would be my two guesses. Either I would say number one, the correct answer, which would be like maybe sixties or seventies, just because, you know, flower power movement, even though, you know, the piece doesn't necessarily have that sort of statement per se, but it has that sixties vintage look. Or honestly, I would say 2022 because of how much, of art today especially on the internet is you know based on color aesthetic and contrast yeah. and, and it can still be simple but you know the colors are maybe a little bit louder and, and, and all yeah. those things especially in digital art today so yeah. for me it has that mateo when you use this word hyper pop look but it still it feels vintage still yeah <laughs> i can definitely see the hyper pop and speaking yeah. of the vintage, and this might even be a little curveball for an aesthetic. I don't, maybe you don't feel this way, but I kind of just thought of it. It seems like it could weirdly almost work as like a 90s aesthetic. Like it makes me think of like the, specifically the colors, right? It's got these kind of crazy colors that I feel like I could see this up in like a Taco Bell as a little art piece, or it seems like a 90s like bowling alley or something, like carpet everywhere. Like with the, with the, that's what the grass looks like, and then those color, the bright colors all around, or like the chairs. That, that kind of just came to my mind. I mean, that's You're how not I feel too. Wrong, I think, because like a good term for this, and you know, it's like that kishiness. You know what I'm referring to? Like it's it's kind of almost tacky. Like the colors are almost yeah. a little bit tacky, aesthetically speaking. But then uh, yeah. the more you look at it, you kind of see a lot of beauty in it as well like it, it doesn't it's mm -hmm. tacky but not cheesy like because it's warhol yeah. has that thing where like it's the contrast and and it kind of you know goes above the tackiness of the colors yeah. per se yeah uh, actually and this might be a little segue to something i want to talk about is specifically the colors because if i'm being honest with you Shaw, i feel like the colors completely could make it or break this piece mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i see that that's my probably biggest negative is if the colors were different of the flowers, especially the grass too, I think I wouldn't like this piece as, mu this piece as much as I do now. You and know? That, that would bring us into actually the series of paintings um, of flowers that Warhol did. And, and yeah. you know, he did have different shapes and different um, colors for the flowers. So looking into one individual like pane of this series, is actually very interesting because you get to focus in on the shape and colors of this particular canvas, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that pretty much is our thoughts on this one. And I will say, like, Mateo, like, you know, I think in our discussion, we came up with so many different analogies, right, to art we've seen today or maybe in the yeah. past. 
And like, doesn't that just speak to Andy Warhol as an artist and the influence that he's had, like the incredible influence that he's had? Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, you could see it through that. That's what we all had different years were saying. Yeah. Uh, of when this, if this, if you didn't know the year this came out, Warhol was absolutely ahead of his time and had a huge influence just on art overall in our mm -hmm. culture, you know? You know, you, you talk about like books and literature and, you know, someone might argue that like in every book that's made, there's like a little bit of like Shakespeare or some other like Charles mm -hmm. Dickens, because like those people were so important to their respective field. You know, yeah. when Warhol came on the scene, like he changed the way that pop culture is viewed forever. You know, like yeah. so much of like all the work that we see, like from some of the most popular artists working today, like even a even like you know Banksy or like other digit like other digital artists or people who focus in on you know pop culture and art which is like a very very big thing right now is like doing fine art that either pays homage to like a pop culture artifact or something like that right like it's it's almost become part of our like culture to have art that is about culture you know what i'm saying yeah so in that cool. sense i think warhol like completely changed the game so and and it's funny because Mateo, like when we were discussing which piece to pick, you know, my suggestion was to pick a Warhol, but I was also like, let's not do the classic pieces. Let's do something entirely different. Yeah. And even then, you can still see the influence. Like even in his so-called like nature painting, you can still see that yeah, yeah. distinct yeah. pop art look. Yeah, yeah. Warhol absolutely still keeps his style. I think in a way it's kind of beautiful where he, he keeps that pop art style, but also deviates, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a commercial painting, but it's not a commercial painting, <laughs> Yeah, which is amazing, which is amazing, which is like, like, honestly, just like even having this episode and like, this is the point of our podcast. Like you just see this painting from such a interesting, unique light. And just, I know I've garnered like much, so much appreciation for Warhol in just such a small piece. And yeah. Um, yeah, that's our goal with this podcast is, you know, to be able to look at these pieces and appreciate them on a deeper level than if we were to just, you know, pass it by on the Internet somehow. And, yeah, um, yeah. And instead of just like looking at something and be like, oh, cool. You know, yeah. There's a difference between saying, oh, well, cool, you know, oh, you know, Warhol did this so just because of the name. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's good. But now that I know a little bit, of, uh, you know history behind it you know i had no idea he found the inspiration from another photo mm -hmm. uh i didn't know this was a whole series mm -hmm. just ever and doing my own research and honestly collecting my own thoughts about this has given me way more appreciation for the piece than i really would have had before and just being able to talk about it to you too as well yeah and that's what we like want to encourage um not just between us but you as a listener as you know you go through the episodes hopefully here's to many more um, that you also get a chance to, you know, dive deep. And, and like I suggested before, maybe look at this before, maybe gather your own thoughts or, you know, if you just want to listen to ours, that's fine too. But, you know, the idea is through this podcast that the cumulative effect of doing these episodes is that both of us, you know, we get to learn more, but we also get to appreciate more. Like obviously yeah. history and research is going to be like our focus. Um, in the podcast but also we want to you know form our own opinions like obviously we want to look at the opinions of others and see how the era yeah. contextualizes every piece but also you know like me and mateo just going on there and, and talking about like our own impressions you know from a emotional or visceral standpoint too i think that's that's really important for look when you're looking at fine arts at least in my opinion yeah i think it's just as important if i'm being honest just the yeah, way if not more honestly you feel because right that's the whole reason i don't want to say there's the whole reason that's part of the reason that the artist even makes a piece you yeah, know whatever I the agree. media may be it's like to get some sort of reaction out of it by looking at it by hearing it by seeing yeah, most, it, everything you know i'm also excited to uh like this was a very comparatively simpler piece but we're also excited to you know feature slightly more complex pieces and pieces that are hopefully like very well known as well. And I know it's, I know for me, that's very daunting to pick, but I'm hoping that we will pick some of those because, you know, those are some of the most well-regarded pieces. And I know for a fact that, you know, 
there is probably something very interesting to look at in there. So obviously, I don't think Mateo. I mean, I don't know your pick yet, but hopefully, episode two isn't the Mona Lisa because that would be you very know, daunting. <laughs> it's not the Mona Lisa. Rashad is not. But Unless? we might do that one. We might uh, do that. We one. might, maybe, but no, no, it's it's not. Okay. I, I didn't pick the Mona Lisa. You know. So, um, yeah. Let's let's reveal Mateo's pick. So, like we mentioned earlier, just like Ox Fiends, what we're gonna do is so this one was kind of our neutral ground pick. I know we both you know appreciate Warhol to an extent, um, but we're gonna be picking like interchangeably which piece we're gonna be talking about next. And the nice thing is we're both new to this, so no matter what, it's gonna be a surprise. So, Mateo, why don't you go ahead and uh, fill us in on what we'll be talking about in the next episode? Yeah, uh, and also for all the listeners in, I, I would. I'm I'm sending the picture right now to Rashad as well. All right, here we go. Okay, <laughs> so the the thing I'm picking is the painting by Gustav Klimt, The Kiss. That's what I'm picking. I think you know. I think I've heard of this, and I'm looking at it right now. And this is going to be a fascinating episode because, like, immediately when you see this piece, I think everyone has like. A reaction like to the colors already i'm just like yeah let's save it for the next episode but i've had a definite reaction just to the colors on first you, you've had a reaction yes the, yeah we're yes. Like, gonna save it for the next episode let's but do that you've had a reaction that's a pretty and big I'm tease i gotta say <laughs> so, you're making me excited rashad i know i'm excited like so, yeah that was episode one of expressionist discovery mateo how do you think that went <laughs> I think it went well overall. But, That's you know, good. Obviously, we're still finding our footing, but honestly, I think the way we explained the pieces and everything kind of went better than uh, I thought it was going to go. That's good. Happy. That's good. And we hope that yeah. you guys were also maybe interested in listening to this episode, and we'll be returning for this next piece and future episodes. And hopefully, it gets you guys to just yeah appreciate art, engage with it more, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Mateo, anything yeah. else? Um, just want to thank everyone for listening. Thank you, everyone. Hope Bye. you guys all have a good one.